about today. And on this note, I think I would like to pass the word to today's moderator, to the moderator of the panel discussion, strategy consultant and leadership coach, Maria Nasetkina. Maria, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you, Natalia. Uh, dear everyone, hello, good morning. It's uh, so nice to see you all. Uh, my name is Maria and I will be the moderator of today's uh, discussion. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it will be a great discussion because we have uh, some fantastic uh, participants of this discussion. And let me please represent to you um, two of my friends, I would say, uh, people whom I know for a while already. Uh, it's uh, Yurko Filuk, uh, he's an entrepreneur and uh, CEO of Promprila Trio Innovation and uh, co-founder of the platform Teplamista. Yurko, hi. <laughs> and uh, Irina Solovey, who is a community development strategist, uh, president of the NGO Garage Gang and co-founder of the Big Idea. It's a social innovation platform and also she works as a key expert from a European Council on Civil Society Development of Ukraine. Hello, Irina. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, um, it's, I'm sure it will be a nice and easy going discussion. I'm really hoping for this kind of uh, warm conversation. And the purpose of the whole discussion is to, um, to, to see the benefits and the changes that have occurred uh, in the specifics of the work as, as a result of the pandemic. Um, I hope that we can generate some useful recommendations for people who are struggling with the post-COVID uh, experience, I would say, that has influenced us all. And uh, uh, to, to start our conversation, I would give you, uh, Irina, uh, some uh, time to uh, tell us more about your role, about your current role, your functions in the organization that you work or with the teams that you currently manage. Uh, what do you do as a leader? Well, I, I hope that it was well, Yuri who feels like warmer <laughs> this morning than me. I, 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 I kind of tend to look at this issue more, in, in more sober way. But uh, if regarding my role, um, I think um, I can define it as um, facilitator of uh, organizational evolution because uh, we are making this shift from uh, non-profit to a non-profit with an entrepreneur entrepreneurial model so uh, it's like a knowledge enterprise because we will tend to create value with what we learn from mm -hmm. community development uh, in last 12 years and um, offer it as uh, products and services to different stakeholders mm -hmm. i don't know if you want me to add something or we can pass no, it no. that's good we're just uh, starting you know so people understand uh, who you are i'm i'm sure that um, many of them are familiar with uh, you and the uh, garage gang and uh, the work that you're mm -hmm. doing I would not assume, and maybe it was my mistake not to say anything about the organization. Uh, Gergang is an um, NGO uh, founded in 2009, and in the last 12 years we were implementing creative city model in Ukraine, which uh, we consider as uh, work done. So uh, now we um, have a new strategy for the next decade, and um, our um, flagmans probably to, to learn about our uh, activities and uh, impact is a uh, big idea platform where uh, crowdfunding uh, culture was uh, accepted and developed and uh, I think also a good story is uh, City Code uh, is a program uh, for building creative potential of uh, big and small cities and in small cities at the east I think it was really um, useful experience and it was uh, published in the book so it can be shared mm -hmm. and if somebody's curious to learn more about it it's a good thing to go and uh, look up this book at the website uh, okay. code mista okay great if you can maybe share a website so people can uh, uh, and i think you think i can do it here in, in yeah, this yeah, chat yeah. And yeah, okay. while you are writing, I would pass the uh, floor to Yurko. Uh, Yurko, can you please uh, introduce yourself and tell a, a little bit about the about your current role as a leader? Mm -hmm. Hi to everybody. Uh, so first of all, I'm entrepreneur, starting from 13 years old. 
and uh, I like to use my skills in different fields of uh, and activities and different zones of society. And uh, so I have uh, several uh, projects now uh, with responsibilities, of course. <laughs> so first one is restaurant business. And together with my partners, we are in this business for last 12 years. But I am not managing now a partner, I'm just partner. But still, that's a kind of responsibility. Uh, second direction is uh, city platform Warm City, Apple Mista. Uh, and we set up it uh, eight years ago. And the idea was to unite business, civil society, and public authorities and uh, develop such directions like art, education, new economy, uh, urban development, uh, sport, energy efficiency, uh, sustainable mobility, new media creation, uh, social entrepreneurship development, and so on and so on. And we've realized more than 400 different initiatives in the city during the last uh, around seven years, already seven, eight years. And uh, now, uh, the most ambitious project, uh, which was uh, created uh, again on the platform Tepamista, is from Brillo Renovation. Uh, that's impact investment uh, project. We revitalize uh, old post-Soviet Union uh, factory in the center of the city, in the innovation center, uh, in cross of uh, art, education, economical, and urban development, and create a unique ecosystem uh, combining different different functions and that's quite a huge project uh, almost 40 40 000 square meters all together and we step by step involve uh, both uh, commercial investments and uh, uh, some support from different international partners and develop this project uh, step by step and now we are in active uh, period of realizing the project uh, till the end of 2023, we should finalize all the reconstructions and just finish Great. with this part. So, um, uh, and one more, and one more new role. So now we are one of uh, co-owners of the process uh, city development strategy development in one of Rankivsk. and that's interesting. That um, uh, this initiative is realizing not just from uh, city council. Uh, perspective, but we unite uh, at least five uh, different stakeholders. Uh, Teplomista again, City Council, uh, uh, Business Association, Scientists uh, Association, and uh, Drama Theatre as the main uh, cultural player in the region. And uh, we are together equal uh, co-owners and co-partners of this process, and we are just on the beginning, and that's the road process for five years plus but it's quite interesting and again responsible yeah wow thank you Yuri. thank you Irina uh, as everyone can see the project that uh, you are managing both Yurko and Irina they are huge and uh, they are very uh, you, you know they take a lot of responsibility and uh, a lot of involvement from your side um, thank you for this introduction introduction I would like to also welcome the participants dear participants good morning to everyone uh, we are welcoming you to participate in this uh, conversation if if you have any questions or comments please uh, write them in the chat we will see and uh, we will uh, i will uh, look at the questions and we will take some of them thank you we will we will really appreciate for your we'll really, re, we will really appreciate your participation okay so moving to the discussion um we uh, the, the theme of our panel discussion is the influence of COVID on uh, teamwork, and both of you are managing your teams. And uh, you know, I observe uh, uh, the evolution of uh, uh, attitude towards the uh, remote work, and the, when at first we we thought that it's something temporary, you know, it will uh, you know go away, and now we understand that everything you now mostly everything is online and people often now say uh, that 
they prefer online formats over offline. I hear this a lot from the trainings I provide. And the question to you is, uh, what do you see as a benefit of uh, remote work uh, at, at current stage? What are the benefits? We will talk about the challenges a lot, but I would like to hear the benefits. How do you see these uh, benefits? Irina, do you want to start or Yurko? No, Yurko, you wanna, you wanna, I, I see that you have something to say. Okay, first of all, I should say that uh... Even lockdown uh, had a lot of benefits for society and for us and for the team because it was a good time just to reflect. For example, uh, for me personally, it was opportunity to spend two months in Ivano-Frankivsk, not to move uh, to other cities, and it was perfect. Uh, it was for the first time during the last, I don't know, five, ten years maybe. Uh, and it's good uh, from time to time to make a pause and just to reflect and just to see around, uh, that's that's positive in any case. Uh, of course, uh, this pan pandemic has a lot of uh, negative effects and of course people are dying and that's uh, not good. But still, uh, there are a lot of uh, positive side effects uh, as for me. Uh, so uh, the nature is not, not uh, all the time like, um, uh, very smooth. We uh, in our life we have tops and downs, and that's that's normal. That we have some uh, stresses, and if we are talking about uh, short stresses, it's positive for our bodies. If we are talking about long stresses, uh, it's mostly not so positive, but uh, still it depends already on our attitude. So if to speak about lockdown, I think it's it's mostly positive. If to speak about what to do next, uh, that's uh, is much more interesting. And uh, our choice was uh, not to uh, switch off, uh, offline normal life. Uh, and all the time we were looking for okay new uh, safety protocols, how to continue to meet each other and work each other, but not to push if somebody is not ready to go to the office. It's okay for us. But still, we don't uh, just close the office uh, for all the time, just switch just online. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible because we are social uh, uh, social people and we need to communicate both online, offline. Uh, and uh, I would say that um, the intrigue is uh, in looking this uh, optimal balances, uh, how to combine this online offline elements in our life. And uh, now, uh, because it's obvious that online is, is very important now, and we, we can't avoid this also, but still we need to look for uh, offline uh, communications because it's also impossible to live for us as people without mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you said that um, for you, the positive effect was that it uh, created some time to reflect on different issues, right? And this is not only for you, I think that it's all, all, uh, also for your team, right? And uh, the time to reflect, maybe to strategize and think ahead. And uh, you said that short stresses are good for us uh, because they push us maybe to uh, out of our comfort zone, <laughs> which, but we are not in the comfort zone, the zone right now, right? The pandemic created not very non-comfortable zone for us. Uh, so the benefit for the short but sorry, Marie, but it's, it, it's again, it's, uh, it depends on our attitude. Because yes, as for yes. me, right now, it's not already uh, stress uh, if you would like not to see it uh, as a stress. Of course, it was a stress in the beginning, but now it's just okay. new reality, and that's all. And it, it, it's possible to be happy now here with these conditions. Super, yeah. Uh, thank you, Yurko. Uh, Irina, do you have anything to add to this conversation? How do, do you see any positive effects, or you see just negative effects? Like, will we use the dark side of this conversation? <laughs> I, w I would probably just want to kind of, um, I don't know if it's a correct word, uh, to, to interfere, like to go the same way that you're co pointed to, because for me, it's very important as a community strategist that uh, kind of. Uh, um, 
wants people to to realize that community is a living system and the living system would follow this um, rules of nature that your co had mentioned that uh, the, the the nature has seasons and uh, in our social systems it would be good if we learn to recognize the seasons as well it was a coincidence for us that uh, just after the we developed a new strategy and it was uh, a kind of um, bottom phase of the cycle globally and pandemic and also was good for us as for organization to to narrow down and i learned that uh, um, it's a good thing for organization to be um, flexible. I mean, that, that you can expand when you need, you, you, you can rebalance when you introduce new, new product, new service, and you can also go narrow. So we, we probably won because we didn't feel any stress. We continue to grow as we grew all years before. So it's been like no fluctuation. Probably because we had always followed that principle that we want to have two legs offline and online and the uh, big idea platform by the um, 2020 was um, not small, not big, but but uh, kind of online. So we had activities that uh, were good at uh, crowdfunding is our competence and we could continue to, to offer this to community. And um, for us, I, I as a specialist, I would like to kind of assist other organization to embrace their process of going narrow before you go uh, yeah. before expanding again mm -hmm. because it, it's it's good to it's easier to regroup when you're smaller and and then we just probably have to let go this idea that going bigger 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 all the time is making sense in in 2021 when we want to learn um ecological, yes, like uh, empathic uh, ways of um, working with people. And uh, in, in that sense, we need to recognize that teams, uh, companies, organizations, uh, communities are all living systems and, and they have their nature and we need to learn more about it. And I agree with your call, it was a perfect moment to, to learn more. Mm -hmm. May I add uh, something yeah. else? Uh, I told that I feel now uh, this situation is not stressed uh, for me. And mostly I can say, um, I would say that uh, our team is also not stressed as it was in the beginning, but still it's normal to feel stress. Uh, and uh, it was a little bit unexpected for me when uh, lockdown just came to our life. And uh, this uh, very unsustained uh, situation in the beginning because nobody uh, could uh, realize what is happening and what we will, we will have in the next year. Uh, but still, for me, it's okay because uh, I'm an entrepreneur and this is a, kind, a part of my nature. But for uh, some uh, team members and for a lot of them, it was a real stress and even for some of them, deep stress. And mm -hmm. It was a little bit unexpected for me because my nature is different, but still I should realize the nature of other people and team members. And uh, what I tried to do, I just uh, talk a lot to every of them. And from time to time, I just put uh, one by one uh, my team members. Uh, and we, we were walking a lot around the, uh, the lake and just talking. And after that, it was becoming easier. And so every day I had uh, at least three, four such uh, walks. And wow. it, was, it, was, it was a little bit um, complicated because you need to spend a lot of extra resources. But that was very helpful for, uh, for the team uh, to find this new balance. And uh, But the main idea what which I try to say now is that it, it's normal if you feel stress and uh, leaders should also accept this and not just to, uh, to think that if, you, if you're okay, it means that everybody should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's, that's really nice. Thank you, Yurko. Uh, I think that's amazing if you have the opportunity to, you know, 
still have some offline contact with the people and with them by the lake and you said that uh, you already have implemented some protocols you changed some approach in the work that you are doing the teamwork so we have the protocol you have the protocols you have this uh, offline uh, walk-ins with the team and uh, you are investing more time into uh, people now even more time into you know hearing them and understanding them more is there anything else that you do uh, as a leader in order to support people, in order to support your team in this uh, uh, sometimes stressful for them uh, experience, sometimes just different, you know, uh, the whole um, situation with the pandemic? Is there anything else, any practical things that you are doing for your team to support them in this? Ira, you will start. I, I can I can probably okay. Go here. okay. Um, the thing is, I I cannot say we changed a lot because of COVID. We probably um, just um, introduced some new instruments, but I think it's more related to uh, implement implementation of new strategy. But what we usually did and um, what I think like what helps people it's to feel they are not on their own. And I think uh, it, it's good to, to build, to grow this feeling all the time. And uh, what we do sometimes, uh, people take, take up new roles and it's difficult for them to adapt to this new role. So we support with uh, facilitation sessions. For example, they go and have one-to-one -one facilitation sessions and the organization compensates the cost of it. Um, and I think it's more about uh, kind of social adaptation, not not rather even because I know some organizations cover um, time with uh, people who who support the mental state to the facilitation of the mental state. It's more like how I find myself uh, in this new work environment. But um, I know some of the people from the team they also go to 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 receive mental help. And I think if uh, there was a situation that um, people needed and uh, they can afford it we would probably consider to support this well because we know it's uh, we're working as innovators innovators need to adapt themselves a lot before they can kind of figure out how the community can adapt to, to new uh, rules of, uh, of the game and um, we recognize that since long time ago and uh, after covid i think uh, more of the effect had what uh, you are also did like conversations and sometimes it would be conversations like um i don't know maybe parental tone where you say it, life is like this <laughs> <laughs> and the sooner you recognize it and the sooner you will stop waiting for the perfect sunny day to 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 kind of uh, enter the life uh, the harder it will be and 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 you, you, you it's it's very i'm i'm sure you are knows it's very difficult to know ahead what what kind of words will support the, the person in in the moment is i think the effect is that you are there and they are not on their own um because you also learn on on the go what, what to say and uh, w which in the issue to address and recognize uh, the, the person is dealing with, uh, with it uh, we also support the um, educational process so we uh, found there uh, when they choose some courses uh, that would uh, for example if they want they want to grow there's a new program and they want to grow they want to take up a new role and they are open enough to say you know i, I feel like i would need some uh, education and i chose have chosen this course uh, and and we uh, fund this sometimes fully sometimes partially uh, sometimes we say like uh, they, they they say i want to fund it myself it's also important to kind of recognize that they want to be self sufficient it, it doesn't have organization doesn't have to be a, per, a parent to, to a team worker but um, it's always a dialogue uh, how they see their growth I must recognize uh, I used to kind of 
consider growth goals more of me and my co-founder but now i think uh, i i came to a realization that uh, i actually can offer this support to everybody in the team everybody in the team has their see their trajectory somehow and uh, just the moment of recognizing they have it you're already mm -hmm. kind of on the supportive side and then I do what I always did. I always find how the talent of the person can fully uh, be realized in, in the team. And, and I must say, they do not always like it because like sometimes I recognize that talent is faster than them. And I'm like, okay, you're doing this great. And okay, let's do this for this is this event. And they like go with this eyes. and like, oh, I hate you. I didn't want to start it just now, but you kind of uh, forced me. So it, it's very important to be... Um, uh, aware that uh, growth is painful and uh, you must think oh I support their growth I'm so such a good leader but uh, it's very important to to give people their time and uh, find crazy. their own rhythm yeah 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 and uh, uh, tell, tell them uh, sometimes that stop waiting for life to happen yeah it's already happening <laughs> stop stop waiting for pandemic to end it's the new reality. It's something that we uh, have to, you know, accept, and uh, maybe just changing the attitude will help us to. Yeah, if you love, I think uh, it's a part of the bigger process, and your call might recognize it because they always say that their mission was to uh, assist the shift of citizens from this uh, dependent, uh, compliant uh, position in society to self-reliant position, and this is, I think, what it is. It's it's seeing it that they not everybody's there or even you not there in all the situations, and and supporting that that shift like when you can more and more rely on yourself. And, and um, even as a leader, I consider that um, I thought of myself as a good leader because I could always say, okay, I can do it without you. I can, I'm so great. I can do it just by myself. Okay. Uh, now I think it's like, I can do it. I can do it by myself, but I, I, if they, they be there and help me. And, and this is totally different way of looking at it. And I'm still accustoming myself to, to see it this way, because this is a true way. It's just like, um, not like you, you have to be self-reliant, then you can be maximum in max in maximum and optimal way uh, assisted helped uh, supported collaborating you you always and, and this is not easy because the, the whole society is making that shift so mm -hmm. uh, every help of uh, kit and lab helps so do you do you think this is the the also thanks to covid and the the, the lockdown and the change uh, with the uh, format of working that uh, we open we now have even more opportunities to be responsible and uh, to take this responsibility for the work that we do, for the people that we manage, uh, and people in our teams, they can take more responsibility. Do you think? Uh, do you think this? I don't know if you want because I'm talking too much. No, no. <laughs> It's, 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 it's always interesting to listen to you. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's always good to hear you. Uh, be sure for that. Um, it, it's maybe regarding the global overview. I hear phrases like from different group work that we did during COVID, and it was amazing that this uh, group work was uh, global. Uh, and it would sound like your health is in your hands. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of tough because health is a community uh, effect. But especially in this pandemic, we, we kind of realize this. It's not an individual thing, it's a community thing. At the same time, I think it's a process uh, important because we want to be able to support diversity. And if we want more um, styles, more nature kind of tendencies, like Yura mentioned, that he has a tendency, an entrepreneurial tendency, somebody ha would have an analytical tendency. I. You, I, I think I have a vision in your tendency, I don't know. Okay, but just for, for as an example, right? Somebody has more tendency to organize a learning environment. We all have kind of our styles and we want this to be contributed, introduced into the teamwork and that demands from us to be 
par parents to our style, to mm -hmm. our original nature. To, to we, it's our responsibility to grow it, so we can uh, bring it in and and learn how to contribute it in a way that, like uh, you are said, um, if you think for you for you for for your way to see the, the situation, it's okay that it's okay for everybody. If mm -hmm. if we just remember that it's diverse. And it's not that they, they you feel your situation, they feel their situation, and it's good to check uh, it, is it how is it for the other? You can expect that somebody will one day check with how mm -hmm. how why is there how why mm -hmm. is there? Like, how is it going mm -hmm. for you? Mm -hmm. uh, Yurko, do you have uh, any other practical uh, recommendation, practical tools you would? Uh, uh, recommend people to take into account when thinking about the team right now uh, in, uh, in, in the changed format of cooperation. I can say that uh, also to continue what Ira was talking about, that any crisis uh, and pandemic is also just one of the crises. Yeah. It's a good uh, opportunity also for making stronger uh, team and even society. And uh, when we, uh, when the society face a uh, new uh, threat, so mm -hmm. there is always a choice between uh, to play win-lose game, uh, it means lose-lose, or try to unite efforts and uh, just try to solve this uh, challenge together. And uh, that was a good test, as for me, for our society this time. And uh, the, pos uh, the position of responsibility for leaders is to be as active as possible in uniting uh, different players, different team members, as you want. It depends on which system we are talking about. Uh, and for example, uh, in Ivano Frankivsk, we start to unite uh, all the players who, uh, who was struggling the problem. And... Uh, managed to be quite successful in that and it was extremely important i can uh, i can realize it now and uh, ivan libovitsky uh, he is uh, a member of supervisory board at the planista supervisory board he told me that now uh, uh, we will see uh, what what the uh, what kind of quality uh, of society quality we will get uh, for the next 10 years. And it depends on your leadership and leadership of other organizations in the city right now. And uh, you should do maximum to unite efforts. And uh, it, it's true, it's, it's completely true. I would say that it's, it's really, it was really important. And uh, we, could, we could see uh, similar processes in other cities in Ukraine and beyond. Uh, and I would say that after this pandemic, I believe, I still believe in humanity. <laughs> and uh, so we have potential to, to, to stay on this earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you you shoot for the stars. Like, forget global, let's go space. <laughs> okay, but uh, of course, of course we, we need to we need to do more. We need to uh, we we have very divided uh, societies now. Uh, we we are very split. Yeah. So uh, as uh, if we are talking about leadership in general, I think that uh, inclusive leadership is one of the most requires of the. Uh, current uh, and future uh, periods and uh, we need uh, unite the different different contexts different different players different stakeholders uh, and uh, build inclusive societies because if not i i, I don't uh, understand how we can uh, stay in this earth because we have already so big global common challenges mm -hmm. that it's impossible to somehow to, <laughs> to, to see the future if you don't do it yeah so uh, with this perspective we should use such situations like uh, this pandemic for activating because that's a kind of opportunity for sure so in in the period of crisis it's much more easier to unite people uh, because we have common 
problems, common challenges in, that, in this period. Mm -hmm. uh, you said a little bit about the feeling of being split. Uh, you know, that, that sometimes people are um, feeling uh, that they are, you know, isolated. Uh, and I've been working with uh, different NGOs, and sometimes I hear from employees that, for example, they joined a team during the pandemic, and they've been working with the team for one year, for example, at the, and they have never seen offline the people with whom they are working. And they are feeling sometimes isolated and sometimes they don't feel, you know, the whole spirit, the whole team spirit of the organization. So uh, what would you recommend for people to do, for the leaders to do in order to uh, have this united team spirit, in order to help people to feel part of their organizations? Or maybe the concept of team spirit has changed and you don't have to do this now. What do you think? Irina, Yurko. Irina, you want to start? Yurko? I, I, I can say it's very simple for me. Uh, so in any case, uh, as I told you already before, I, I don't believe that it's, it's possible to build a sustainable long-term uh, sustainable uh, organizations or companies just in online. So uh, I would recommend just build flexible, safe offline platforms for communication in any case and use uh, flex flexible both of these tools online and offline. And uh, in any case, if we are talking about some, I don't know, strate strategic sessions, some creativity, uh, some just uh, this, uh, I don't know, team building and so on. So we need these offline elements in any case. Of course, uh, there are some challenges how to do it safety, safe, but it's, it's possible. Why not? Uh, now we, we can't feel the difference of our style of work before COVID and after COVID. Uh, yes, of course, uh, just we, we have some new protocols, but still people will feel uh, this uh, flexibility because we, we, we also use both online and offline before. I live uh, for two cities, so half of my time is not in one of Frankivsk. Uh, physically, I'm not with my team, but still uh, it, it was normal and it's normal now. So it's possible to combine. Mm -hmm. But if it's online and offline, right? Yeah, why, why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Irina, what do you think? Uh, I think I agree with your core. I can just give you a fancy term for it. <laughs> uh, it's sort of like a floating team, uh, but I think we learned this before. We always worked with the team as a rather open system. So maybe the challenge is uh, felt more by teams that um, consider themselves as a, as a fixed structure uh, because we work with cities. Uh, you, it's always participatory approach, so you always kind of uh, people come for certain task and 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 go and return for different tasks, or uh, for example, for us it's true that uh, people were um, entering in one role, then switching the role, and then deciding, okay, we don't want like we had platform and we had a team uh, that works in the cities. So for example, a person decides, okay enough of the platform for me i i want to go and, and do the, this uh, big thing in, in in cities and they go and they do amazing work uh, so so uh, the in the mobility and mobility between um uh, offline uh, uh, online um be creative about it for sure uh, we also had the challenge because we had newly assembled, te assembled team, we have new strategy, uh, we basically changing the culture from uh, um, NGO to, to uh, entrepreneur model, so we're learning to work with data, to analyze the results more meticulously, like, and um, just maybe uh, 
if it's if it doesn't feel safe to 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 rethink the the team dynamics uh, by the team itself it's it's good to 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 invite people like you maria and i'm sure you mm -hmm. you can support them with this going more uh, to to add more flow more mobility to to the team mm -hmm. in the team uh, yeah I just yes. remind one more point, which can be potentially helpful. Uh, what was uh, re uh, naturally helpful for us in this situation, uh, just to switch uh, stress on the problem of COVID, uh, when we uh, get uh, a bigger challenge in our <laughs> work tasks. <laughs> <laughs> Just choose a bigger problem. That's it. <laughs> and I agree. Oh, big, big pain, yeah? COVID is just context. We, yeah, need, yeah. we have new strategy, guys. <laughs> Let's go. That's, and that's enough. And, and after that, people just, they have no self space already to think and reflect about COVID and... Uh, it's and, endless and nature. <laughs> so, so it, it's, Sometimes it's, it's naturally helpful, all, almost all the time. <laughs> so just choose a bigger problem and focus on this uh, challenge that you have in your projects and forget about the COVID. You, have to just... you cannot forget it, you cannot avoid it. Uh, and sometimes it inter intervenes with the, uh, you want to, to have a certain rhythm. For example, we had planned for, to, to work uh, specifically with uh, team energy uh, offline and then uh, another introduced quarantine short one but okay we, we cannot make it offline so we just choose not to miss the opportunity we did some initial work online we introduced mm -hmm. the the person who, uh, who was invited to to work with team and then team was more open and more warm to welcome her when we had a later uh, offline session and it was great so it, we found that the, the, the the combination of the two worked even better so i don't know i always try to to look not where it's coming from because usually life comes from some spooky thing but i i tend to look where it leads us where it takes us if it mm -hmm. took us to rather better design of this interaction for the team welcome mm -hmm. so you're just open for a new uh new maybe ways of looking at the team as a whole right uh, i must put a, like a different hat on my head like a community strategist not the team leader right uh we had implemented like ukraine not us i mean not organization us but us as ukrainians we already created a creative society creative society is an environment that produces conditions for knowledge society, mm -hmm. skills economy, all this stuff, right? So this is not just uh, consequences of pandemic. This is uh, new economic reality, new social reality. People uh, have uh, life work and they implement this life work by doing different jobs. I, I, I think even you are I can, uh, if, if you allow, I can say that you have a really big picture and then you uh, implement uh, self-sufficient projects because it's more realistic and makes uh, better business sense to, to implement that, that bigger picture. I don't know if uh, easily or simplistically described when you, when you talk about this triangle. Yeah, it's a, it's a much bigger picture and, you, and it's not yet done and maybe it's like a, a north star just there you never reach it it just guides you so and maybe in that sense uh, what we were joking about the given the choosing the bigger problem is to uh, kind of help team to pay attention to a bigger picture and then covid becomes just a con contextual kind of a condition so it's like uh, 10 years ago every time we would start the program and everybody say oh it's elections we say elections are always we cannot mm -hmm. wait until the end so it's like uh, the, the the thing is like agree kind of accept that uh, it's not going anywhere okay. so it's not the event it's yeah. a context mm -hmm. and one, and one yeah. more point when, when you have this big vision and big picture and you just realize different steps uh, towards to, to the goal, uh, you should uh, remember that good manager or good leader is always using different uh, tools, different skills, and there is no just one magic pillar. 
uh, and we are we live in very dynamic world uh, and everything is changing very fast rapidly and uh, so uh, empathy is very important now and mm -hmm. you should feel sometimes you should talk to people sometimes you should push them a little bit sometimes you should just uh, let uh, the things just go on as, as they yeah. are yeah and and so on so it's it's very sensitive and uh, good leader and good manager is should invest uh, a lot of time in uh, our self development uh, and uh, uh, fulfill our uh, so, so get more and more uh, tools yeah of of this management and, and leadership and so on and uh, that's, uh, I think, again, a, a feature of uh, a leader of tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, at this point, I think uh, I should mention also an, uh, a good, um, I think for, my, for me, it's a good uh, style of leadership. It's called adaptive leadership. It's uh, more like you know that your organization, organization needs something now and you as a leader have the capacity to adapt to serve this purpose. So a, a leader has to, to not kind of organization goes to, to for the for the person to be a great leader. It's not the organization is the tool for the leader to be great. The great, great leadership is to adapt to, to, to fit the purpose of the organization or of the job or of the work. Mm -hmm. Big picture. It's one thing and um, no, this is, uh, is mm -hmm. my mind. But at the same time, when I when I hear adapt, it's a little bit. Uh, I have a kind of small protest inside of me, uh, because at the same time we should uh, uh, stay in proactive role, and when we have, especially when we have big challenges, the leadership uh, um, sometimes per leadership of personality is uh, more important than adaptivity to. Uh, mood of uh, I, I think you, uh, you uh, if I give you an example you will understand what I mean I don't mean uh, comply mm -hmm. you know agree with something as a, as a, a form of adaptivity I mean for example if we now uh, think we want to add this entrepreneur model to become this social enterprise mm -hmm. knowledge enterprise entrepreneur model then it me as a leader I need to kind of grow this entrepreneurial uh, knowledge tools as you say capacity uh, to understand to like i used my uh, uh, mindset my uh, frames that i use would be non-profit so i would okay this every intervention every program is like a gift to society right but if i think a uh high -huh, entrepreneur model it has to have a, this feedback loop that, so i create well, uh, value and i capture value right it's a new thing for me i need to learn it and it's uh, i think um, same as you said like invest in yourself in your capacity in your skills in your tools mm -hmm. so you you can fit better for the purpose of the organization through the face of organization. And maybe a good example also here with uh, Roman Nabozniak with Veterana Brownie, because they go like they open as uh, through crowdfunding model, then they work as a cafeteria, then they uh, go to e-commerce because the, uh, and, and this, his ability to kind of, for every phase his next, his next in project. the context and in the business, yeah, I know they, they come to, from like yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's great. So, it, and, and I, I'm I'm really curious what kind of model he will use there. So this is ability to all the time choose the model that fits the purpose, yeah, the yeah. context, the mm -hmm. capacity of people you work with, and 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 not be like, okay, I'm this style of a leader, and I be all my life like this. No, you you you. This is this floating style also. Like you love uh, mm -hmm. your model to be not because this is the model I really know well. But because this model will work well for the business, for this business system that you want to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, Irina, Yurko, we have only 10 minutes left. Uh, the conversation is just, I think, uh, is uh, going up and uh, takes uh, more, even more, more energy. And I love it. But uh, to um, maybe um, conclude a little bit and allow the audience to think uh -huh. about this. Just I remember that. Yeah. Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I can feel a lot of energy. So, dear the, dear audience, the participants, if you have any questions, I see one question from Olena. And it's addressed to Yurko. Yurko, if you can just uh, type the answer because it's not uh, really the part of this uh, conversation as, that we have in the panel discussion. But if you want to address, please address in the comments. So, dear uh, audience, please, if you have any uh, questions, uh, uh, put them in the chat and we will take them. But um, to follow up on the discussion we had right now, we talked about how what does it mean to be a good leader, uh, mm -hmm. including in the times of uh, you know pandemic times, and we talked about some uh, characteristics or skills that you have to have now, uh, especially, and uh, they are as follows: it's the flexibility, it's the empathy, uh, it's in the vision that the leader has to have this uh, vision, the, the vision of the bigger picture. Um, you should, as a leader, uh, continue invest in yourself, in your development and in the development of your team. And uh, the last the thing that Irina was saying is uh, about, um, not saying even even not only being flexible, but being like uh, floating all the time. So you uh, you you understand the context, the context and you adapt to this context, but in a floating way. Is it correct? Uh, well, you know, in a way that fits the purpose for, for the um, kind of period of time. You choose period of time, six months, six months, six years, six years, but you uh, mm -hmm. you can uh, consider it. I, I, I catched back the, the thought that slipped my mind earlier, and it's about the major change in um, teamwork. Uh, because uh, we used to uh, look for consensus in the team and uh, looking for consensus for a long time it just recently we started to talk that we can also allow for the census and uh, i don't think we have too many tools to work with this but uh it's already new times and we should talk about uh, about synchrony so uh especially with uh, leaders who struggle with this um, team's energy team dynamics because it's partially offline partially online sometimes all the time online sometimes all the time offline and you're like already suffocating because too much of interactions and and pe for people it's too much doom too much that uh what you can work on is on uh team's synchrony so it you consider a team as a crew, like you are on the ship. So you cannot just like, we used to think the team is like um, assemble workers in the factory, but it's not anymore. Uh, it's like a crew. They, the people have to complement uh, each other with their competences. And, and uh, the work of the leader is to get them synchronized, allow for the synchrony. Uh, it, like accept it that it will happen and allow it sometimes for example we have these cycles of six weeks and then we have two two weeks cool off uh, it, it, we have the cycles in the context of OKR because uh, I think it's important uh, for the leader to kind of show the um, new perspectives but also help assist team to stay focused and what we use for our team is the OKR. It's a productivity system that's used by many tech companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, we like it. Uh, so we have like a, a group of people, a board, three, four people that we consider six months uh, cycle. And we uh, kind of link the six weeks, six uh, months, and the strategy that we kind of discussed for six years and uh, some things we, we know it's in the strategy but we do not bring it into conversation right now just to limit the information people need to digest this informational metabolism is uh, very important and as people can burn out without having a sense why the meaning why why they do this work people can also burn out from having too much meaning why they do mm -hmm. the work. So this is probably, you are also recognized at this moment that bigger picture is good, but sometimes you need to kind of, okay, uh, don't don't look there, don't look, focus, focus here. <laughs> and it also helps. So you, it's important to recognize what is a good moment for, for what. So Yurko, do you think that one of the uh, roles, uh, one of the functions of the leader is to uh, synchronize the teams? Sure, sure, of course, it's very important. Yeah. Uh, I prefer always uh, team-driven uh, projects uh, versus uh, one-leader-driven projects. Uh, and 
I'm a fan of different kinds of partnership, and we always uh, are experimenting with them. Uh, for example, almost 100 is 100 partners. Uh, in from Prilot, we have also uh, or even more total co-creation because we have more than uh, 850 co-investors and more than 40 different institutional partners and so on and so on. So we, we, we love this approach. And if to speak about Team Shu, it's uh, really important when uh, to get the situation when everybody feels, not just realized, but feels the vision and they are driven by this vision and you can get much more better results and you, you need much less uh, time uh, even to synchronize uh, the team when uh, they are really driven by vision. And uh, if to speak about uh, team building, uh, I would start all the time with goal. Uh, that should be ambitious enough for them, not too much, but, but uh, enough, uh, quite ambitious. It should be uh, related to um, values of each of them, each of us and uh, yeah and and what else i don't remember but okay mm -hmm. so uh, if we uh, if we believe in the same goal it's much more easier to motivate us and to synchronize because uh, and to focus yeah, yeah and focus mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Irko. Thank you, Irina. Maybe I you... you have a minute, uh, oh. just uh, to, to, to give an example of synchronization that was, uh, it, it's important, and to link it to the start of the conversation okay, that there is up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, to start to synchronize the team, choose the time you want to pause, recognize you need a pause, choose the time you want to pause simultaneously. Uh, and then fill the, 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 the rest of the timeline with activities you want. And you will be surprised that it will work the best way. Super, thank you. And if you can think of uh, one question you would ask uh, the audience uh, to reflect on, uh, to take this question with them uh, and think about uh, this question in the, rela in, 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 in the line of the whole conversation that we had now, right now, what this question would be? I like what uh, Ira just told uh, recently. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good question to uh, find the balance, for example, for next half of year, year or one year, uh, this combination between active periods and pauses, and how to synchronize them uh, within the dynamic of the team. Because it's mm -hmm. not, it, it, sometimes it's good to have uh, at the same time, uh, some you know, location and so on and uh, quiet period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 sensitive question, and uh, it's interesting task for any leader mm -hmm. to think about how you can find the balance and how you can synchronize and yourself plan. and the team. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Irina. Do you have anything to? Uh, maybe just just to complement what you said, so reflect on both questions. And my question would be, uh, when is my quiet moment during the day? When is my quiet moment during the day? Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, very energetic and uh, very uh, fruitful conversation. Uh, dear audience, if you have anything to add or if you enjoyed the conversation, please give us some feedback. Uh, so we take all your uh, wishes or recommendations or just the feedback. Uh, and we can see that you've been with us during this one hour. Natalia is joining us. So I pass the floor to Natalia. And if someone from the audience wants to say anything, we still see in the chat. So we will be very, very grateful for that. Irina, Yurko, thank you a lot. Thank, thank you, you, Maria. It was great. Bye. Yeah, thank you for a great discussion. And I just joined you to announce 10 minute break before the next uh, slot. So, uh, dear participants, please take your time to have a break now from this, from for, to contemplate some of the thoughts that our speakers have said. And uh, yeah, take a 10 minute break and then join us back on the main stage. See you then. Mm -hmm.